This episode of Because Science is brought to you by War Games. Huh. Hello there. Star Wars The Last Jedi is arguably the most controversial Star Wars film. Just search online and you'll find comment threads and videos and tweets all saying just how many mistakes and plot holes there were. There was a lot of salt. Now, I'm not here to say that the movie was good or bad, but I am here to say that if you apply a little science to Star Wars, as we do here, a lot of these plot holes make total sense. Oh, you can find many hot takes about the supposed plot holes in The Last Jedi, but what I want to do is address three of the largest that were sent my way by you that deal with scientific accuracy, and they all have something to do with space. The first is why resistance ships seem to slow down when they run out of fuel. The second is why bombs dropped from resistance fighters don't float, they fall straight down. And the third is how General Organa could do this. Now, I'll also point out that these aren't technically plot holes. That's not what plot holes are, but we can still address them for their accuracy no matter what the scum and villainy that is the internet has to say. How's that for a hot take? No! Let's set the scene for the first plot hole. Throughout The Last Jedi, the remainder of the Resistance is running from the First Order, and they have to stay out of range of the First Order's guns, so they have to burn fuel. Now, the problem that some viewers had was that when some of the smaller Resistance ships run out of fuel, it appears as though they slow down and fall back into the range of the First Order's guns. And those viewers are right. There is a point to be made here. Out here, in the middle of Keep going, this isn't a special edition, thank you. Out here in the middle of space, there's no air to get in the way of motion and no gravity wells close enough to make much of a difference. And so, if you give, mm, mm, and that's good alien goo goo, if you give an object some velocity out here, it will continue on in a straight line at that velocity forever without slowing down. This is just an extension of smart boy Isaac <laughs> Newton. Isaac Newton, thank you, Isaac Newton's first law of motion, which states, every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. The internet is right. If a spaceship's engine suddenly cut out, it would not slow down. It would continue on in a straight line at a constant velocity forever. But the internet is wrong in that it absolutely could look like the spaceship slowed down. So let's just imagine ourselves in this pursuit again. We are watching the First Order pursue the resistance ships from afar in a stationary frame. Now from this perspective, both ships have some velocity. But also because of Newton's first law, we can assume that both spaceships or fleets of spaceships are accelerating because this would cause the resistance to have to continually burn fuel to stay ahead of the first order. Now, if the resistance engines cut out because they ran out of fuel, the first order now has more velocity over time and there is no slowing down. However, if we change this reference frame from stationary to moving with the First Order, as it appears it is in the film, the same situation can be interpreted as the First Order having no velocity and the Resistance having a negative velocity, appearing to slow down from this moving reference frame. So these two situations that we just went through are mathematically identical from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Mm, yes, and so this scene makes sense as we are moving with the first order in it. But does a bomb dropping in space make sense? Another plot hole that's not a plot hole is right in the opening scene when Rose's sister Paige drops bombs from a resistance ship onto the dreadnought. Why, the internet says, do these bombs drop downwards if the battle is happening in microgravity? Shouldn't instead these bombs just Float? <laughs> Amazingly, every word they say about this plot hole is wrong. I mean, float is fine, and most of most of the words are fine. Just 
wipe the frame. <laughs> the pull of a planet's gravity depends on how far away you are from that planet's center of mass. For us, that's almost always the distance between the center of mass and the surface of the Earth. But gravity doesn't stop at the surface of a planet. It never stops. The acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance you are away from the gravity's source. There is no distance limit here. For example, and this may surprise you, even though the International Space Station is 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, it still experiences 90% the pull of gravity that we do. No, seriously, the only reason why astronauts inside the ISS are weightless is because it is orbiting the Earth. It has enough sideways velocity to keep it in constant freefall. It is always plummeting towards the Earth's surface like a stone, but it is constantly missing the surface of the Earth. Seriously, <laughs> the math, it, it doesn't lie. Oh, the sacred texts! If the ISS stopped orbiting the Earth, it would drop to Earth's surface like a stone. And so, because the first battle scene in The Last Jedi occurs above the surface of a planet, and because gravity would still be acting all the way up there on those ships, all the Resistance bomber would have to do is provide some kind of upward thrust to hover above the dreadnought to counteract the downward acceleration due to gravity. Then if it opened up its bomb bay doors and released those bombs, those bombs would drop almost as though they were on the surface of a planet minus air resistance. This gets around any weird hand-wavy anti-gravity tech and gets around the magnetism technology <laughs> mentioned in The Last Jedi's visual dictionary. Oh, come on, man! With science, this controversial scene makes sense too. Does it? Yes, it does. How are we talking right now? I don't know, quantum something? Let's move on, I have to be wired somewhere. The last scene in The Last Jedi that you told me makes no sense is when General Organa is spaced, but is still able to pull herself back to safety. In a previous episode of Because Science About Star-Lord, we explained why someone who is spaced isn't going to explode or immediately freeze or otherwise instantly perish. However, in about 15 seconds, a spaced person <laughs> will lose consciousness, and if they are not resuscitated within 90 seconds, they probably won't be resuscitated at all. So let's time this scene with General Leia. Assuming that her exposure to the void starts when the camera cuts back to her, then she starts pulling herself back to safety, she's still conscious, after about 35 seconds, and she makes it to an airlock within 60 seconds. Now, considering that Leia is a space general in a space war, she probably knows what to do if you get spaced. Close your eyes and exhale, otherwise your lungs shred themselves. So in that context, these numbers aren't exact, but they're fine. They're definitely not plot hole worthy. So within about that minute time frame, how could Leia pull herself back to her ship? Equal and opposite forces. Imagine you use something like the force to pull a lightsaber to you. A lightsaber, fine. Mm, mm, that's good space moo moo. Now imagine you use something like the force to pull a lightsaber to you. Now whatever the force is, it has to be applying a force to the lightsaber to accelerate its mass to you and to your hand. Now if that is happening and the force is coming from you, you experience an equal and opposite force in the other direction. Now a lightsaber doesn't weigh very much, so this force is not gonna accelerate your mass very much and the frictional force at your feet is gonna be able to keep you planted. But in space, friction affects you not. Oh, I'm in space. <laughs> so all Leia would have to do, floating outside of the Rattus, is use the force to apply a small force to that ship. If she did that, and we're talking about real world physics here, then the Rattus is gonna pull on her with an equivalent, an opposite facing force. Now because force equals mass, times acceleration, the Rattus is so much more massive, so it's not gonna accelerate very much. It's gonna be imperceptible. But because Leia, under the same force, is so much less massive, she is gonna accelerate back towards the bridge at a perfectly plausible pace. 
The director of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson, thought the same thing, and I agreed with him. Tweeted him this video, and maybe we can help make the next movie. Oh, my backstory! So, three of the biggest plot holes in The Last Jedi that you sent to me dealing with scientific accuracy are... Decently accurate, I think. Bombs could drop downwards in space under the right conditions. General Organa could force her way back to her ship safely and in a decent amount of time. And it could look like a ship was slowing down in space during a space pursuit from a certain point of view. I will admit that The Last Jedi did cause a lot of controversy. But the great thing about science is that with the right data, controversy disappears because science. Do you know what I had to think about a lot? Is what would happen if the ISS did stop orbiting? If it was just hovering above the Earth's surface using thrust, using rockets, then all of the astronauts inside would cease to be weightless. They would just be standing in a spaceship which feels weird and it sounds weird, but that's only because engineers don't really consider that situation because it would take so much fuel just to keep a spaceship constantly hovering above the Earth's surface. I think that's why it feels counterintuitive. We just don't think that way because it's totally not practical. But in the Star Wars universe, hey, maybe they have ultra efficient thrusters. Of, of some kind. Also, if you time Leia's scene from beginning to end in real time, real movie time, she's in space for about two minutes. Less workable. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. The internet won't. Thanks again to War Games for sponsoring today's episode of Because Science. War Games is a first of its kind digital series where you affect the story. Cool, right? We're clearly living in a sci-fi future because War Games is a show that watches you, tracking which characters and story threads most interest you to change the narrative as you go. The story changes each time you watch, and if you can't wait to experience this interactive story for yourself, sounds pretty wild, right? We've got a first look at episode one over on Nerdist.com, so head over there to check it out right now. Thank you so much for watching, Matthew. If you want more of me, you can go back to Nerdist.com and check out Musquatch or the space program on ProjectAlpha.com, where if you go right now and sign up for premium content from Nerdist and Geek and Sundry, you can get the main episodes of Because Science two days earlier than everyone else. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and hitting that notification bell for the Because Science YouTube and the Because Science Facebook. And you can also drop us comments, questions, and corrections at our social media pages on Instagram and on the other one, Twitter. Also follow me there, personally.